It's Thursday, the 16th of March. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And today, the Defense Visual Information Distribution Service has released a declassified version of the totally botched Russian intercept of the MQ-9 Reaper drone over the Black Sea. We'll talk more about the botched intercept in a moment. But first, let's take a look and see exactly what brought this drone down. The MQ-9 drone is powered by the Garrett TPE-331 turboprop engine, direct drive turboshaft engine, pushing a four-bladed propeller. I believe it's a four-bladed metal propeller. I can't get the specs on the propeller just yet. But when I first saw the footage of this on the television set, seeing this one curled prop, I was thinking, well, boys, why couldn't you keep flying that drone? It doesn't look that badly damaged. But if you look closer at this video from DVIDs, you can see that not only is that prop blade damaged but as we scroll through here we should be able to find this prop blade is in the feathered position now this being a single engine aircraft i'm not sure if this is a fully featherable propeller on the mq9 drone i believe it's a reversible pitch propeller so in that case you know it would have to move through the feathered position in order to feather the, the propeller but with that much damage to the propeller of four blades, two of the four blades being that badly damaged, I could see that damage forcing this aircraft down. Typically, if you lose oil pressure to these engines, the propeller should go into a low pitch condition, high RPM, so that you can continue to operate. But if, the, if one prop blade is darn near feathered like this, stuck in the feathered position because you've jammed the gears on it and the other prop blade badly bent, you're not going to be producing a enough thrust to remain airborne and b the vibration might just very well shake itself to death thus causing this aircraft to be forced landed into the black sea so now let's talk about the botched portion and terrible airmanship of this intercept airspace around the united states is protected by something called the ADIS, the air defense identification zone anytime an aircraft enters this airspace that has not been properly identified via the transponder it is a unknown rider and you'll get a car a call on the guard frequency 121.5 unknown rider unknown rider and you need to identify yourself and get your transponder working if you continue into this airspace unidentified you will be intercepted by a military that is sitting alert usually a couple of guard units one, I believe, at Fresno and one at Portland. And they're going to come up and do a military intercept to find out just who you are and what you're up to. And in order to do a professional military intercept, here's the basic rules. The fighters usually work in a pair, a pair of fighters, and you usually send one fighter ahead to intercept the aircraft and do a formation rejoin alongside of the aircraft to get the crew's attention. Now, I know we're talking about an MQ-9 drone that does not have a pilot, but they have cameras on board and they can clearly see what's going on just like a pilot, just as we saw in this video. And then the second aircraft remains behind out of sight just in case anything happens. Now, generally, you're intercepting these aircraft, these aircraft, unknown riders, without the intention of shooting them down. But just in case, they're back there loaded for bear. And so... <laughs> As a civilian pilot, you need to know you're intercepting aircraft signals and you need to review them from time to time, what the different wing rocks and or if they if you cannot establish radio communications, what the different Nordo or no radio um, procedures are and what they mean. So the lead aircraft comes alongside the aircraft, hopefully is able to match the speed of the aircraft, usually a much slower aircraft and then give them the signal and get their attention and figure out their intentions from there. So instead of doing a professional intercept, the Russian Su-27 here is harassing the drone by doing a series of flybys. There he's dumping fuel. The Su-27 has the ability to dump fuel and he does a very close pass. That's the first pass. The propeller's fine, the drone's fine. It does disrupt the camera briefly and then on video here, we see him doing a second pass where the Russian Su-27 actually hits the prop. Now, what this Russian intercept pilot is doing is a fundamental 
failure to understand formation basics, very similar to the same situation as to what happened in the collision of the P-63 versus the B-17 when the Airbus, when the Airbus in that crash over um, in uh, Texas there, directed the P-63 to put him belly up to the B-17. You never ever want to be belly up to another aircraft in formation because you will hit him. And that's exactly what happened here. Stand by, let me get the models. Anytime you go belly up to a formation aircraft at a higher rate of speed, you're gonna, you're gonna smash right into him because you cannot see below the wings. Now on this second pass here with the Su-27, you can see that he is farther below the drone than he was on the previous pass and perhaps where he wanted to be. And you're gonna see him try to pull up at the last moment to avoid the collision. Right there, oh, pull up. There he whacks the drone. Camera comes back on, and there you see the damage to the propeller. Now, one of the long-standing problems with the Russian pilots and Air Force is their lack of currency and qualification in the aircraft. It's hard to get the flying time that these pilots need to stay current and qualified in these aircraft. And this intercept just shows a fundamental lack of basic airmanship on behalf of the Russian pilot. Thanks so much for your support of this channel especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.